what is good we got big austin abbott back in the house what's up man how you doing good man what's going on it's been a minute i'm excited man this is gonna be a fun one i'm happy to be here how you doing i'm doing great man uh we're getting closer and closer to the draft so we are going to hit you with a little do not leave your rookie draft without these players uh so we got a bunch of guys who are you know not the hot names not the not the first round guys but we're going to kind of jump in here back half of the second and kind of take you through there of, of guys that we really like uh, to target in all those different rounds of kind of the data that we have and just in general uh, our sentiments and where we feel and see these guys going so Austin first off the rip who is the first guy that you get into that like middle of the second round that you're just you're not going to leave the draft without Yup, Casey, this is going to be probably the best prospect, the best running back prospect that I'm going to talk about in this video. The earliest in my dynasty rookie rankings, the 205. I have Jalen Wright. Man, he's a player I feel like you cannot leave your draft without him. If, if he's still on the board, you got to pick. And we're talking mid-second. Uh, he might even go earlier than that, man. Yeah, uh, A lot of people really, really like Jalen Wright. I don't blame him. And let me hit you with a big stat right off the rip. Oh. Bijan Robinson. No, he's not gonna be the next Bijan Robinson, but just hear me out. Bijan Robinson's final college season, 6.1 yards per carry, a thousand plus rushing yards, and a 44640 time. Okay. There was one running back in the 2024 class that reached all of these marks. It's Jalen Wright. Okay. Uh Wright, dude, Wright was so good in 2023. Again, over a thousand rushing yards, a 43840 time, good for 98th percentile. Not too bad, right? And then he was also first in college football in yards per attempt at 7.4, uh, minimum 100 rushing attempts. So just, uh, man, I'll, I'll tell you what, like if you're still not convinced, his broad jump, 11-2, yeah. the second longest in combine history for running backs. Again, broad jump, 11-2, explosiveness, 52.1% breakaway percentage, and his yards created per attempt third in college football. It was 4.35, wildly efficient. Production was absolutely there. And Casey, we've, we, I've, I've given you the stat before, but I'm going to say it again, man. The first five yards of the 40-yard dash, Devon Achan, 14.94 miles per hour. Jalen Wright, 15.16 mm. miles per hour. So he is, a good split. he's got real speed right out of the gate. A hundred percent. Oh, you know, when you're right, you're right. And you are right here. And I, I love, I love this, this stab. We got him right now in our FT, FFD ADP super flex tight end premium, uh, coming right in around two Oh seven. So that's the perfect jumping off point. I think to kind of get a guy that, that you don't want to miss out on that. I think everybody's pretty much in on Jalen, right? There are at least, at least general people know about Jalen, right? Are pretty excited about him, but I agree. He is definitely the running back that I'm not trying to leave this draft without first and foremost. So uh, the second guy on our list, or at least on or the, on our list or my list, rather, I think we share him here and he's, he's a little bit further down, but I'd kind of tear him in with this guy would be Marshawn Lloyd uh, mm -hmm. from USC to USC, coast to coast there, uh, staying in the USC, just likes the initials. Um What's interesting about Marshawn Lloyd is I think he does give you a nice three down set, right? I mean, he has the ability, he's got the size, he's got the measurables, he's got the speed to kind of give you everything that you want. We're talking about breakaway percentage with uh, Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, eighth overall in breakaway percentage according to PFF. Uh, I think he is a pretty good pass catcher as well. Uh, 18 targets. 13 receptions, 25 targets, 18 receptions in 22. Um, so not not quite hitting the threshold that some people want to see, but it, it doesn't look unnatural when he catches the ball. Uh, but he's a very, very interesting player. I like the, the South Carolina tape a little better than the USC tape, uh, but I think USC was was uh you know kind of kind of went and hand picked him and he he went and, and hung out with Caleb Williams for a while and and I really enjoyed everything about Marshawn Lloyd and like I said what what you're getting here is is at least a, a very good first and second down back and I think you got a third down back uh, I, I think you can get all three downs with this guy now it depends on the ecosystem and where he goes uh ball security may be the one thing that people might be 
slightly concerned with, but that's never a thing that I really get too down on. If you're a guy who wants to work, uh, and which if you're going to the NFL and you don't want to work, you're probably not going to last really long. Ball security is one of those things that you can tighten up on, right? It's not, it's, it's not like, oh, the guy's just slow. You can't fix slow, but you can fix how you carry the ball uh, and how it mm-hmm. gets uh, taken from you. So what are your thoughts on Marshawn Lloyd? He's a good player, man. He's, he's grown on me. He crushed at the Senior Bowl. Um, I think he was interviewed, and he said something silly like, man, I'm the best running back in this class. And like, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't believe that. But like when he said it, he just had so much confidence. I was like, okay, make, maybe I got to do a little bit more research. Like maybe I should start digging into this guy even more. And um, he, again, case we, we've talked about this, like even probably back in the summer, man. But I remember Kayla Williams handpicked him, right? Mm-hmm. Brought him over, for, essentially recruited him. And again, anytime the first overall pick in the NFL draft wants you on the roster, not a bad thing. Not but, at all. Uh, I'm um, I'm I'm with you, man. He's he's definitely he increased he he rose in my rankings a good chunk, man. I I I think I was a little a little too low on him, but now I've become more bullish. Um, the tape was fine, like I I wasn't blown away with it. The statistics by no means were were gonna blow you away either, but. You know, at the end of the day, I, I thought his 40 time, his speed score, right? He, what he what he ended up coming in, I think it was 220 pounds, 5'9". Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, wow, for him to run, was it a 4'4'6"? Four, four, it was it was so. like really, really impressive. It was it was way faster than I thought. And uh, I just, I think that Marshawn Lloyd, if he lands in the right situation, I think he could do some damage. And and if there's no big dog in front of him, like I think he could absolutely win a starting role in the NFL. Yeah. Would, yeah. would you agree? Yeah. Like I said, the draft capital on these running backs are going to, you know, it, these guys may not even be in this conversation of, of kind of that back half of the second round guys if, if the draft capital is good because both of Jalen Wright and, and Marshawn Lloyd have explosive traits that people I think could really get on board with really quick if the ecosystem and the draft capital catch on. But right now we're still seeing them slide back uh, in the back half of this. Marshawn Lloyd is, is 212 uh, right now in the FFD ADP through uh, a whole bunch of post-combine rookie drafts here. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree, man. I, I think I think Marshawn Lloyd is a lot of fun. I think maybe one of the big pundits just, just put him at like two and their overall running back ranking. So, you know, that'll, that might have been Daniel Jeremiah or somebody, mm-hmm. I forget who. So that always seems to move the needle a little bit. But not quite getting the respect that I thought he would after really then stamping it, I think, with a good combine. So just to, just a running back that I'd be willing to trade uh, in and, and take, a, take a shot on because the running back class not being all that sexy, Wright and Lloyd are two that I think are, are really good shots to – um, yeah, take over a backfield because of their explosive natures. Uh, so that's that's kind of my uh, feeling on those two guys. So let's keep it moving here. I wanted to touch on kind of this next group of guys at the, the you know the three one to three four five in our ADP, and there's a bunch of guys that you know I don't want to say you can't leave. I don't don't leave your draft with every single player on the back half of this thing, but I guess. More so, maybe maybe tell me or pick some of your favorites out of these guys: Xavier uh, Leggett, Leggett, uh, Malachi Corley, Ricky Persall, and Jerome Baker. So those guys are kind of the next up after Marshawn Lord. There, I like all those guys. To me, what a lot of this conversation tonight is going to tell me is that you know the people who said this draft class sucks. It's just the draft fatigue kind of stuff has set in. We c- I can go almost all the way through this mm-hmm. third round and find somebody I really, really like um, that either is the public isn't quite in on or is just that's just kind of how the cookie crumbled. And we'll, you know, some of it will change with draft capital. But I, I, those thirds right now are I think they're money, man, just like they were money last year. Um, and I think you could even get past like three, five, three, six last year. You were still picking guys who could really help you out. And then this year, I think it's going to be the same. So. Um, do you have kind of a favorite of that group or two of those guys who really stand out to you? Uh, so Xavier Leggett is the highest in my rankings based off the, you know, that list that you just gave me. I have met the two nine, but the player I really want to talk about right now, I, I really want to focus on Javon Baker. I have him at the three one, the three Oh one. Um, where do, where do you, let me ask you before I start talking about Javon Baker, Casey, where do you have him in your rankings? Um, he's probably somewhere around three, eight. 
Is he that late? Okay, wow. I wasn't sure. I thought I might have been... Man, I, I almost felt like I should be even more bullish than Javon Baker. Like, I was trying to squeeze him into, like, the end of the second. But I, I struggled. I have, him at the, I have him at the 301. Um, but let me... Casey, I know I gave you a, a big stat to start. I'm going to give you another one. Puka Nakua, man. I was doing my best. I was like, how did everybody miss on Puka Nakua? I know, like, a lot of the analytic uh, community... There was a lot to like about Puka, right? The production wasn't necessarily wasn't there. Um, I think he had like 800 yards his peak season, his final year. Um, but you know, I'm spending this off season trying to figure out like how did Puka put together such a good season? Like what what did he do? Let's look at some of the advanced analytics because it, for me, like the film looked good, but I wanted to, to really dive into the analytics. And I noticed that Puka had a 3.00 yards per route run and 50% or higher contested catch rate in his final season, there were only three wide receivers in this entire 24 class to do that. That was Malik Washington, Taj Washington, and Javon Baker, okay? And of that list, only one wide receiver, like Puka, was also six foot and 200 pounds or or heavier, right? That was Javon Baker. Um, So, again, if, if you are still not convinced some other stats about Javon Baker that, that really caught my attention, dude. He was first in yards per reception. Yeah, okay. So no. like that big playability was, was beyond evident, almost 22 yards per reception, like crazy dude. That, that's, you know, the furthest thing from sustainable, but apparently it was for Javon Baker. Uh, he was third in yak per reception. Again, big playability. He was great with the ball in his hands. Great after the catch uh, and third in reception in receiving yards per per team pass attempt, right? I know Snoog is a huge oh, yeah. Javon Baker fan. He kind of turned me on to him initially. And and like once I started digging into him, I was like, all right, you know, Snoog's not wrong. Like this this kid can play. Um, but I really liked what I saw from Javon Baker at UCF. And he crushed, he crushed man. He crushed zone like 3.1 yards oh, yeah. per route run versus man. 3.14 yards per route run versus zone. Nearly identical you know, over 1,100 yards this year, uh, legitimate NFL size at 6'1", 202, uh, big splash plays, you know, that big 17.5 career yards per catch, uh, great collegiate production, over 2,000 total yards. Uh, he checks a lot of boxes, he, he man. He does. He's, he's, I think he's going to be a third round pick in the NFL draft. I think we're going to see a day two draft capital for Javon Baker. Um, I don't I don't know if he could squeeze into like the end of the second. I don't know. Like like there's a chance, but I'd put my money on him being a third round pick. And man, like if you if you're a fan of an NFL team and they pivot from receiver in the first round and they're let's say they whatever, they go any position, like like a big need and they need to get a wide receiver, second or third, like oh my god, this is the draft to do it, man. Sure, I'd love to have neighbors. I'd love to have Marvin Harrison Jr. or Adunze, one of the big dogs, but but man, if you pass on them and and you're looking to get a receiver later, like you're still going to be very happy. So yeah, yeah, I pulled my rankings up. I got them kind of in a tier at three, four, three, six kind of range. Okay, um, okay. I'm so, at three hundred one. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, man, there's there's a lot to like about Baker. I, I can I can get down with that. Snoog has been on this program singing his praises, and I'm 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 there with him. Uh, I think he slid a little bit throughout this process. Um, but you know, all it takes is one team to go, Hey, say, Hey, I'm taking Baker in the, in the mid second round. And maybe you and I don't see it that way. And you know, day two capital being in the third round, um, potential, but like, you know, what if, what if Buffalo trades back and does, you know, and then, you know, they kind of move some stuff around and now they have a third round pick and a second round pick. And what if somehow Javon Baker lands in Buffalo, you know, Javon Baker is now probably a, a, a middle, to high end second round pick in your rookie drafts it's just that quick right i mean because he does like you mentioned all those things that you like and there's a there's a few guys floating down around here that if they get better draft capital than expected like jonathan mingo nobody thought jonathan mingo was going second pick to the to the carolina panthers and was that the right thing to do i don't know it's tbd yeah that was a terrible situation for them to all go in but nobody saw that coming is all i'm saying so like 
somebody could is can, can jump up here into that range where you know Mingo was going last year in these drafts, which was you know anywhere from two two to two four two five two six uh, in super flex tight end premium. So you mentioned Baker, the yards per route run were outstanding. He was sixteenth overall, the yards per reception twenty two and a half. And this is in his final year. Um, was third overall. A dot was good. So showing you that he can kind of get down the field. He can be an explosive receiver, and he's got that bigger body um, kind of play style. So. I'm with you. I like I like Javon Baker there. Malachi Corley would probably be my favorite kind of pick out of that group. I like I just like the game. Mm-hmm. I like I, I fall in love with those yak guys. I'm not going to front. Um, and and he was probably he's the yak king of this of this class. So Corley and I think Corley's probably going to pencil in some pretty good draft capital. I'd I'd put him as a day two guy, second or third round. I think you're going to see Corley. I think you're going to see a ton of wide receivers go off the board in the second and the third round because everybody wants them. Everybody needs them. You know, there's only a few teams out there where once you get past wide receiver two, that you're all that thrilled about the, you know, the next, you saw what the bills or you saw what the Texans just did. You know, they just loaded up across the board. This is passing league, baby. This is what we're doing. Uh, So people are going to be loading up, but I like, I like Corley. I like Baker and I like Pearsall. So, you know, I don't think you can really go wrong on that on that three turn. And I think that's really my biggest takeaway, but I'm going to, I'm going to go a little deeper here. And if you've been, if you've been messing around with us for a while, you know that, um, I'm a, I'm a big Jalen McMillan guy. I think Mm -hmm. Jalen McMillan is, is an absolute beast. He's going a little later than those guys. He's one that I absolutely will not leave my draft without. I'll trade back or trade up. I'll trade all around left, right up down. whatever you need me to do. I'm getting Jalen McMillan uh, coming in at 6'1", 192. Now, 23 season, a little marred by an injury, right? He was really off to the races, got injured in with Michigan State there week three, I believe that was. But in 22, he was team leader in targets at 118 targets, 79 receptions, team high, over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. That was a team high. The yak was a team high. Missed tackles, forced team high. First downs, team high. Definitely a little bit more of a slot. And I'm saying the team high because there's another monster on that team in Roma Dunze. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, so the 22 for McMillan was awesome. And then there were spots where he was healthy and back this year where he really helped them get over some humps, really stood out to me. Um, and, and again, look, this guy's a little bit more of that, that slim framed wide receiver of 6'1", 192. So not a huge guy, but he's got the speed. Uh, I don't think him being a slimmer guy really affects the play on the field and the ability to dominate that middle of the field, uh, which I think is a, is a huge part of today's NFL because of the nature of how it sets up. And, you know, back in the day, you didn't go across the middle of the field. You didn't, you, you didn't, you know, you weren't going to be a small tank. Dell didn't exist really back in the day, but now it's a new day. It's a new dawn. And I think Jalen McMillan is, is perfect for this. And it's, you, you know, don't, don't get it twisted that, that he can only do that middle of the field stuff. He's also got the quickness and the speed to get those big vertical chunks on you. Um, and, and I don't, he's certainly not soft. He's got a very diverse route tree. You can get a lot of different looks from him. So I love Jalen McMillan. Uh, and that's, that's for sure a guy that I'm stamping, uh, not leaving the draft without what, who else, what are you thinking? Uh, who else you got over there? Uh, Austin Casey, that might be the best, uh, segment of the podcast so far, man. I, I might like Jalen McMillan more than you, dude. I I am at the three Oh four. Where, where is Jalen in your rankings? Right right there. Okay. Copycat. You saw my rankings first. That's okay. Yeah, I actually haven't seen them. Um. Uh, no, that that makes me feel pretty good, though. That is funny. You know, I, I think it's probably a, a good thing that we did this exercise where we did not see one another's rankings prior to it. And, uh, man, I, I just I, I don't think people realize how good Jalen McMillan is. Like, Casey, everything you said was right on the money. And prior to his leg injury, that was in week three this year, mm-hmm. right, versus Michigan State. McMillan was on a mission. He was on a mission. He had 95 yards and three touchdowns versus Boise State, 120 yards and a touchdown versus Tulsa, 96 yards Michigan State, 131 yards versus fifth-ranked Oregon. This is what he did prior to his injury, four out of the five games, okay? I mean, his collegiate production was awesome. His size is there. His speed is really good. And he had to earn targets. That's the thing, man. He had to earn these targets fighting with Jalen Polk and Roma Dunze. Okay. So I, I, the final thing I'll say is, man, like take a chance on Jalen, Jalen McMillan. Like he's proven to be worth it. Recency bias is a hell of a drug. Ignore it. Jalen McMillan, the truth. Casey, we're moving on. We're talking about a new wide receiver. 
we are going to talk about Ricky Pearsall. Okay. Where do, where do you have Pearsall in your rankings? So all like all these guys that we're hitting right now are kind of all yep. in that same spot for me. That that three one, three two, three three, three four. So like I got a tier kind of right there. Baker's kind of floating right right around in there. Maybe maybe just on the bubble of that, and then we're you know we're getting into Corley and Jalen McMillan, Pearsall. Baker's floating around there, and actually one, another guy that's on my list here of guys not to leave your draft without, he'd be in the quarterback side of things. Spencer Rattler is right in there for me because okay. we're talking super flex, okay. and, and that's a guy who was QB1 coming in. He has all the parts and pieces, maybe just a little immature um, from what he, and, and the how good's your good, his good is, Rattler's good is really good, so I have him kind of up there as a, as a shot early in your third round because I think the draft capital is going to be a little good, little little better than... Maybe some people are thinking on Spencer Rattler, and and he could get himself a chance, and that's that's all we all we're asking for um, in Superflex. And, and and if he doesn't, if the draft capital isn't as high, he'll drop down in in the ranks, right? Um, right. So right. anyway, uh, Pearsall h- hit me with it. Yep. So I have Pearsall the very next pick after Baker. Baker was three hundred one. Pearsall is three hundred two in my Superflex rookie rankings. Uh, here's what I'll say, man. He's going to be a second round pick in the NFL draft. He's absolutely going round two. I, I don't. I really don't think there's a world that exists where Ricky Pearsall falls to the third round. I think the draft capital is going to be very real. He scored a nine point nine zero out of ten on his raw score. That is thirty second out of three thousand one hundred and twenty one wide receivers in the history of of uh, the NFL Combine. Six foot one, 190 pounds. Check, check. 40 time, 441, right? That's mm-hmm. 90th percentile. Another check. Vertical jump, 42 inches. The dude is white, 99th percentile, Casey. <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy. Uh, broad well, he got jump, hands, ten, too. Yeah, yeah, dude, he's got it all. 10-9 broad jump, seventh amongst all wide receivers in this extremely deep and athletic class. Uh, three cone drill. Six six four. Mm. That was first in the class. Smoked it. Yeah. Okay, dude. He is an athlete. His twenty yard shuttle, third amongst all wide receivers in this class at four point oh five. I mean, he crushed the combine. He's such a good athlete. Uh, and for what it's worth, man, some some workout metrics on Ricky Pearsall, ninety ninth percentile catch radius. I I was like Ricky Pearsall, like. Really, like, like his catch radius is like that, but, but yeah, it is ninety eighth percentile burst score, ninety uh, seventh percentile agility score. I mean, dude, like on paper, he he's he's so good on paper, and mm-hmm. and then you watch him on the field, and you're like, okay, it, it makes sense now. Like, like this guy really is legit. Um, but but I almost question, like, man, why is he not a first round pick? I think think it has to do with this class being extremely deep, and I also think. His production was never like overwhelmingly yeah, good. Yeah, right? yeah. It was, it was, it, it was good. Like he had sixty-five catches this year, nine hundred and sixty-five yards, so just under one thousand, and and four touchdowns. Like the numbers are fine. Like that's good collegiate production. We're happy with it. But it wasn't like you know a thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred yard like outrageous type of season. Uh, Fourteen point eight yards per reception. He's Look, Ricky Pearsall is just a freak athlete. Like at the end of the day, he led Florida in receiving yards the past two seasons. Did it with Anthony Richardson, right? Uh, his hands—they're wildly underrated. That—that's the final thing I'll say about him because 146 targets, three drops. Okay, that yeah. is two percent drop. And rate. the catch of the year. That, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean that. If you haven't seen it, like go go look it up, man. You kind of you kind of look in, like Ricky a little. <laughs> do i got some ricky I, uh, vibes i, I you got a, a bad tattoo t- right here that you're covering yeah. up <laughs> no, no no tattoos okay. i was just gonna say okay. man i need some like hand tats and neck tats <laughs> and like maybe a few piercings but uh two percent drop rate and dude hear me out there's a final thing i'll say player comp chris olave could you Ooh, see it yeah i mean yeah I don't, I don't hate that actually i don't hate that i don't i don't yeah. did he what was his 40 time i don't think it was not quite as fast yeah. as uh, uh olave, no pierce but. was was no, Pearsall, dude, Pearsall had to have him beat, no? I think Olave um, was a 4-3 guy, wasn't he? Let me let me let me look it up. You can uh you can yap about the next guy, but but uh let me let me, let me pull that up okay. right now. I'm curious. Uh, all right, so for me, uh, like I said, again, this is load up on those early threes, man. There's going to be great talent there that that can really 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 uh, help you get over the hump and, and win some leagues, get some great depth. Um, and I think some people are asleep 
because it's it's a third round pick and there's no way that you could because there's probably some analytical statistic that tells you that the likelihood of your third round pick hitting is x well i'm here to tell you that there is a fucking shit ton of awesome talent right here at the top of the third and we but we basically just covered it all so a guy who's going a little later and and we're going to cover some and then we'll go rapid fire at the end uh with some guys that i absolutely love uh malik wilson or malik washington rather wide receiver 18 uh, in our ADP 311 coming in right now. So back end of the third round. Look, he's old. I get it. Uh, it is what it is. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. Yeah, you know, he's he's old. It is what it is. You take it for what it is. He was at Northwestern. He goes to Virginia. Two, two smart guy schools. So the guy's clearly not an idiot. Uh, very, very smart uh, guy here. But Right off the rip at, at, at UVA, just 138 targets. That was fourth overall. 111 receptions. That was first overall. 1,300 yards, fifth overall. Like, yak, fourth overall. So, coming in there, right, nipping at Corley's heels. Uh, yards per route run, 3.15. That's tied for 12th. Uh, missed tackles forced first. First downs, fifth. Uh, just crushing, uh, you know, your, your traditional counting stats or, or what you will here but i mean he came in here and he beat herman moore's record at at uva immediately which is if you're not been around long enough that's a that's an old og uh detroit lions the last time they were good uh but man those hands are outstanding he's so quick and strong he just seems like he wants it more than you do and this is all over his route running, which I came away extremely impressed with. He's just a mean SOB out there. And he's, he just has, he plays with that, that attitude, that play style. It's just, it's like that attitude era of WWF. It's just, it's so much fun. I, I don't know how you can't be rooting for this guy. I don't know why he's not getting more love. And I think it is mostly because he's a little old and didn't produce at Northwestern, but who the hell is producing at Northwestern? Um, and then I think, all these things come together once the ball in his hands. He swords, he turns into from this technician as a route runner to the kid in the backyard paying, which we called it fumble rumble. I think the north, you know, some other people might have called it something that we're not allowed to say anymore. But basically, <laughs> kill the man with the ball, or you know, if we had a bleep button, I would say it, but I won't say it. Um, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. You, you get the ball, you run around, and everybody on the field tries to tackle you. When you tackle it, you throw it up. And that's that's what he reminds me of out there when he's playing. I, this guy is just a G out there. I love, love, love Malik Washington. Uh, I don't know where the draft capital is going to be, but I think it's going to be higher because I think somebody is going to need what he brings to the table. Uh, so give me all that Malik Washington in the late third, early fourths. Casey, I, I love Malik Washington. And before I before I talk about him with you, uh, I just want to say that Chris Olave, you were correct. He ran a four three nine. I forgot he was like that man. Uh, Pierce Hall ran <laughs> I think Pierce, Pierce Hall was like four four two or something. Four four one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So he was I'm just behind him. Splitting hairs. But 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 uh The three makes wow, you yeah. feel a lot faster, right? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> of course, dude. Of course. You you know how it is. Um and forty time matters, man. It's uh you know, the greatest indicator of success in the NFL, of course. But Malik Washington, man, he he was Casey. You were you were right on the money, man. He's he's angry. He just wants it more than you, right? I think I yeah. think that was like the number one thing I took away, and I was just like found myself nodding. I was like, yeah, absolutely, right. Ninetieth uh, percentile in separation, right? Mm. Despite his size, uh, dominated one on ones at the Shrine Bowl. Uh, he Good was point. he's, po he's polished, Bowl. man. He's you know who he's else crossed the Shrine Bowl last year. Mm -hmm. Zay Flowers also wears mm -hmm. number four. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thought you were going like Puka Nakua. No, like, no. I, I mean, what were we uh, we throwing shade at Zay now? Like he is awesome. No, <laughs> no, man. It's uh, you know, he's no longer the new shiny toy. Nobody yeah. cares about Zay yeah, Flowers. True. I'm, I'm joking. He's he's a good player. I'm, I'm I'm still a big fan. Uh, but Malik Washington, dude. Here's uh the final thing I'll say about him. Sixty five percent contested catch rate. Despite being five foot nine, 192 pounds, five foot eight, 192 pounds, right? Like, you, you don't see guys do that, right? Like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, certain at like 43%, 45% contested catch rate. I understand the competition might necessarily not be the same at Virginia, right, for Malik Washington, but 65%, really impressive. Yeah. And 35 missed tackles forced, dude. Yeah. Like, holy, holy cow. That was first in the nation. Mm -hmm. I, that's wild yeah and, and, and you know it's one thing to go to uva and have a good season but when you're mm -hmm. when you're 
putting it on people and you're that much better than everybody else, that's when you know it's just something different, right? It's one thing if you're putting up pretty good numbers at UVA, but when you're putting up gaudy numbers at UVA like that, I think that just that really stands out to me. And yes, I know he was a little older, but you know, I just I just don't care that much at that point. Um, the, the way he plays the game, I think transitions really easily to the next level. So yeah, and and Casey, when you're at a smaller school, there's two things you can do, right? Like it, you either have to absolutely dominate or transfer and go to a bigger school, <laughs> right. and and then and then you know play good ball there. And Malik Washington did the first thing, right? Absolutely crushed at Virginia. So good yeah. on him, man. I'm a big fan, and I hope he crushes it in the NFL. I really hope he gets like third round NFL draft capital. I hope a team like the man. I was gonna say the Jets. I know they did bring in Mike Williams, and and. Yes, he's on like kind of like a one year prove it deal or like, hey, we'll see what happens. But uh, there, there's a handful of teams. The Jets did stick out to me. I just think that, you know, long term with Garrett Wilson, like they, they're going to need another long term option at receiver. And he's just he, he was just so damn good, man. Mm. I think he's going to play a vital role for an NFL offense, you know, moving forward. So I'm yeah. I'm rooting hard for him. I, I love Malik Washington. I'm happy you brought him up. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I got I got one more guy I'll go kind of hard in the paint for, and then I can go a little little faster through all the rest of these guys, throw out a couple mm-hmm. tight ends I like, throw out a couple running backs I like. Uh, I already said Rattler. I got I could throw another quarterback out there who's super late, and I'll, I'll draft him at the end of the draft if he's still hanging around. But Jacob Cowing uh, is mm-hmm. another guy that I just think is, you know, trendy to say, but probably the closest thing we have to this year is Tank Dell, right? Uh, 5'8", 168. He's 23 years old, so again, a little older. Uh, but 85 and 90 catch seasons the last two seasons. Uh, the breakout age of the 95th percentile. College team target share, 99th percentile. College dominator, 99th percentile. Just slaying it out there. Uh, college first downs per route run versus man since 2008 via PFF with 300 plus routes run from our guy FB Insights who crushes it out there. Been on the pod. Good dude. Devonta Smith, 0.17. Tank Dell, 0.17. Malik Neighbors, 0.16. Jacob Cowing, 0.16. And Jordan Addison, 0.15. That's a fantastic list to be a part of. Uh, and I, I, I can't get enough uh, of, of Jacob Cowing. Uh, separation versus man coverage, 81%. 80, That's third in the class right now. And Lad, Roman Wilson, one. Taj uh, Washington, two. Um, Jacob Cowing, third. McConkey fourth. Marvin Harrison, fifth. And then our guy, Jay, Jalen McMillan and Malik Washington coming in at six and seven. So, you know, we're smashing it out of the park with these dudes who can separate, right? I love it. And so, so yep. this is a guy right now, let's see, uh, going four five right now in the FFD ADP. You're going to let me get a hold of a guy like, like <laughs> a guy like that in the fourth round, which I think that's that, that stock will probably get elevated a little bit, but boy, oh boy, is that a, just a steal. If you're, if you're catching a cowing anywhere near the fourth round, you should be back into the third all day long. Uh, but you know, you can only fit so many players in there, but he is he is yeah. a lot of fun and a separation <laughs> machine. His uh his production was was so blatant. It was evident, man. He had three like high levels, you know, straight seasons of, of just pure production. You love to see it, man. Like never gonna be mad about that. And I found this really interesting. I watched an interview on, you know, Jacob Cowing talking about the wide receiver out of Arizona. I watched an interview on him. This might have been like two months ago, man. And I remember, I vividly remember Jacob Cowing, when he was asked about the nuance of his route running, he mentioned that Tyler Lockett's been most influential in Mm. getting him to this point. He said he's trying to replicate and mimic Tyler Lockett's game. That's something that Cowing will strive to do in the NFL as well. Uh, He's he's a speedster. Uh, you know, turn on the tape, man. He he crushed. He crushed uh, in Arizona. So right? much and fun he's, to watch. He's uh, you know, look, he he's in the fourth round of my rankings as well. We'll see what NFL draft capital he gets. Then I'll adjust my rankings. But he's absolutely on my radar, man. He's uh, he's a top twenty wide receiver for me in this class. Yeah, he's he's great, and and the the value is really good on him. I like him. Yeah, I think I think he's a guy to take a shot on him. Why not? Um, where you can get him. So. Anybody else you want to go in on a little bit, or are you ready for a little bit of a lightning round here? No, I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Okay, let's, uh, you, let's do it. Well, you 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 throw you throw a couple guys out. I'll throw a couple guys out because I want to hit some tight ends, a couple running backs, and then another uh, wide receiver or two. 
All right. Um, should we stay in round three, round four? Wherever what, you what take it, wherever you, you want to go. All right, man. Let me uh, let me talk about. Uh, want to do a little Jalen Polk? Jalen Polk. Yeah. Want to talk about his we, teammate? You like you like you like some Polk? I don't I, mind Polk. I like Polk. He's he is. Uh, let me let me be clear, man. Jalen Polk is not number two. Right. That's Jalen McMillan. <laughs> right. Jalen McMillan's number two. Obviously, Rome number one. We're talking about the Washington wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Right. Th- three very high quality wide receivers. But it's in that order for me. It's Rome, of course, number one, far and away. Number two, Jalen McMillan. And the number three who we're talking about right now, Jalen Polk. Uh, Jalen Polk, man, he. <sighs> like, when I think of Jalen Polk, I think of. You know, he, he had, of course, recent production that, that was really, really solid for Washington. And and people look at him as like the two there. Uh, 69 receptions, uh, 1,159 yards, 10 touchdowns. And here's what I'll say, man. What mattered most about Jalen Polk this year? He had seven games of 100 yards, mm. 16.8 yards per carry. He was aggressive. He was very effective with the ball. Yes. Uh, 122 yards and a touchdown versus number three ranked Texas. Like, talk about one of the biggest games of his life, and he just balled out. Like, he showed up, man. Uh, he's he's a scary combination of size. He has good speed. Uh, declared for the NFL draft, like 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 you know, pretty pretty well, you know, pretty far in advance. Like where where he was just like, look, man, I'm gonna come out. I, I'm just letting everybody know, like. I'm ready to take my talent to the next level. I'm, I'm, man. Do you think he's going to be a day two draft pick? Where do, where do you have him in your ranks? I, I don't know. So I, 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 I probably have him maybe you know at like late later later third uh, for for Polk at near the end of the third for my actual rankings. I don't know if yeah. he'll go day two. So like a lot of you know some people like Polk over McMillan. Maybe all you know, like I said, all it takes is one. I don't know where the <laughs> NFL is going to stand on him, but um, it, it's certainly possible. For him to go, uh, you know, I don't think he goes second round, but I think it's certainly possible for both of those Washington guys to go in the third round, right? Yeah, I don't, I personally have a, a round three to four grade on him, somewhere in between there, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he snuck into day three, like early day three. Uh, but we'll see. Like, we'll see. That's the beauty of the NFL draft, man. You, there, there's so many surprises, especially day two, day three, you know, it gets so much more difficult to predict. Uh, but yeah, Jalen Polk, he, he, he should absolutely be on your radar. And, uh, uh, like a few other facts I'll say about Jalen Polk, just before we move on, he had a higher contested catch rate than Malik neighbors. He yeah. had more receiving yards than AD Mitchell. He had more missed tackles forced than Marvin Harrison jr. A faster 40 time than Keon Coleman, higher yards per route run than Xavier worthy. 61203 and the most impressive part man again this is a receiver who earned targets yes. with Roma Dunze and Jalen McMillan of course so uh I think the talent was evident and I think Jalen Polk is is projected I think I think it's going to be closer to, to round like mid round 3 late round 3 now that now that I really think about yeah. uh so, somewhere in that range but but who you got next, Casey? Yeah, he's one I can't really put my finger on exactly where, where the temperature is there because it seems to be kind of all over the place. Um, I'm just going to throw out some guys here at the end um, real quick. I like I like Thrash from Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going 410 right now in our mocks. And then Luke McCaffrey is another wide receiver going 412 right now. Both of those guys, late round guys who I, who I really like. I think both of them are going to be uh, have chances to be really effective. Thrash is, is a whole lot of fun. I think... I think he might end up getting some okay draft capital and, and moving up the ranks for some people here and, and might not be able to get him that late. But And then McCaffrey, he's a lot of fun to watch. And, and then, you're, you know, you're taking a last name of Bloodline, the jeans, uh, everything got good Levi's. So, um, you know, I'll fucks with, with my one of my last picks in my draft being Luke McCaffrey. That's cool with me. From the running back side of things, uh, Will Shipley. Uh, once we get into the later rounds of running backs, let me get him. Um mm. Then we're going, um, you know, I think I don't think Estime and Bucky should be off your lists. I think just because they didn't test well, I think they're both still really good running backs and where you're going to be able to get them, at least right now. We'll see what where the NFL draft kind of bears them out. But Bucky Irvin is a good player. And I think 
Audric Estime is also a really good player, you know, just not the high end speed that you wanted to estimate, you know, brought his pro day, kind of brought the number down, but it's, it's kind of weird to me that you run two four sevens and then all of a sudden you're not, you know, so even if he's somewhere in between or closer to four seven, I don't really care because I know that's not really the game that I'm looking for. What he is, is he's explosive laterally, you know, he's, he's quick, um, for, for a big guy and how big he is. Uh, so, you know, he's not going to be, you know, I'm not saying he's Najee Harris, but like, you know how not everybody, you know, he's not going to, he's, he can, he's going to have a lot of those 10, 15 yard runs. He's not going to have a lot of those crazy breakaway runs. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, uh, can certainly get you, uh, buckets in the end zone there. Uh, and then the running back that I absolutely will not leave the draft without is, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong is Kamini Vidal from Troy. I I'm just infatuated with this guy. I just mm-hmm. cruised through some tape with him. Really, really loved it. He came in. He cooked the uh, the combine there. Ran a four four six. Uh, comes in at five eight, two hundred thirteen pounds. He gives. He he had some uh, good receptions throughout his his career. So he checks the boxes of he twenty six receptions, twenty two receptions, twenty six receptions, and eighteen receptions. So he's got checks the reception box for people like oh god so he must be good uh for for jay wayne who's not here right now and then you know over a thousand yards in his last two years but this guy's got a three down skill set he's an excellent pass protector uh he delivers blows as well as absorbs them um super elusive the contact balance is really great he's one that that i absolutely will have on every team uh if if anybody lets him I, we'll see where he goes in the nfl draft but if he's going to be in the fourth round and i can collect vidal's i certainly will be doing so and then dylan lobb i think is an underrated receiving back here that you might get late who could stick around uh, and carve out a name for him over to the tight end side of things Sinnott in in tight end premium is going way 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 too late like we're we're third fourth round i'm seeing him sometimes and dude he's he could easily be the second tight end and drafted uh he's now for him he's a jack of all trades he's an h back he could play fullback he can play in line he can play you know kind of lined up in a different formation so somebody like san francisco with it with a you know that would use a guy like that. You saw a little bit of that from the Texans last year. Now they just, they just brought in three wide receivers. So you're not going to see as much 21 personnel from them, but the Niners live in a lot of that 21 per one personnel. And there's no better matchup than Kyle use in a spot where you got to have it. He's impossible to guard because you have so much stuff going on and he's reliable as hell. Now I'm not saying that Sinnott's going to be a fullback. I think Sinnott's a tight end, but he's a playmaker. He can make you miss. Um, I saw some stats up there where, where he's at a high level of, of broken tackles and, and evasiveness. Um, so Sinnott is is one that will be on my team every time. Theo Johnson, obviously, as another tight end, really crushed the combine. I'm not really up on his game. He doesn't have a whole lot of production, uh, but the, the RAS score is interesting. And then Jaheim Bell is, is most, depending on where he gets drafted, but seems like right now could be a waiver wire kind of guy and you're in four round tight end premiums. And I'll, I'll take him, man. A lot of fun to watch. Um, had a pretty decent combine as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so those are kind of all the guys that I'm I'm not leaving the draft right at this moment without that are always in my queue when we're doing these rookie mocks. Every single one of those guys, every single time, as soon as I go in, bang, 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 I hit all those guys, throw them in my queue. So I ain't even got to go looking for them because I know I want them. How about you, Austin? What do you got? Yeah, man, I have uh, 36 picks in this rookie draft, so I'm making sure I get all of these guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, dude, it's weird. It's weird. Like, a lot of years, I, I, I used to fade the thirds and fourths and, like... And there'll be years to uh, do that, but I don't think this is yeah. one. No, it's... it's Man, I used to have that mindset, and, like, it's really changed, man. Last year, just absolutely everything was like wow like this first round almost underwhelmed in 23 like for the for for a lot of guys man like jsn underwhelmed like obviously quentin johnston underwhelmed like there were you know you're gonna get those guys you're gonna get those guys it's all right yeah yeah and like there they could still go on to have great careers i'm not saying like their career is over but like there were a lot of guys that like early on last year like disappointed and then like holy cow man i i don't know if i've ever seen so many late round dart throws smash like yeah. in in the 23 class and this 24 class man i i i that candidly, baby. Th- i think it's better yeah. right i think it's got better high end and i think it's just got better depth i think it's an all-around better class and i like the 23 class right 23 class ended up being pretty damn good so 
Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's going to be hard. You know, you, Puka is already up there in the top end of things for, mm-hmm. you know, and Sam Laporta is up there at the top end of things. Be, it's hard to beat that top end of that of last year's class because they, they came in and they are immediately in, you know, seemingly embedded in the top five of a lot of the positions. And so yeah. now C.J. Stroud uh, is probably in the top five of positions, at least Gibbs, for most Jameer. people. Jameer. Yeah, yeah, right. and, and Gibbs Dijon, is right up there. Like so wild. hard to beat the the top end, but yeah, and then you had a lot of fun. You know, you have there, there was a lot of good players in there, um, and 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 you're gonna have some busts and disappointments, and and some of these guys that I'm naming are gonna be irrelevant. Um, they they just are, mm-hmm. but depending on how draft capital goes, or it might take a minute for them to catch on. Um, but if I like somebody. And that, and I'll still put you on my team, but depending on where the draft capital goes and where people like them, you have to adjust accordingly, right? That's what this game's all about. Where the value is, what it's going to be. I'm not going to I'm not going to continue. I'm not going to draft Jalen McMillan at three, three there if he goes in the fifth or sixth round. I'm, I'm I, you got to pump the brakes a little bit, probably, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you oh, probably have course. to move up some guys, but I'm still going to draft him. I'm just going to let him slide down a little bit. I'll still mm-hmm. take him. I'm not out on him. I didn't. I didn't. I don't, I don't think he suddenly got worse at playing. Just my evaluation didn't line up with the NFLs, and we'll see where it goes. But I still want him on the team. So um, that's the kind of way I, I view this. It's the same thing with Audric Estime, Bucky Irving, right. man. They, they didn't have good combines. And that's great for us because we like them, which means they're going to drop. Right, I, I, I'm anticipating that their draft capital is going to be worse at this point right, than we initially had, had thought. So... Again, like we, we can still be in on these guys. It's just we're going to get them cheaper now, right? Right. And again, the, the, the NFL combine does not, you know, it's not the end all, man. It right. is what it is. Oh, certainly not. And, and all these things are pieces. And then, you know, Puka is it crushed and didn't have, he didn't have anything that anybody wanted. And he's a top five at, at his position. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. I'm not doing, I don't know my rankings in front of me. I don't know. Don't hold me to that. But he, he's right up there, you know. But Garrett Wilson or Puka's a question, right? Mm-hmm. So, crazy um, right so you know that, that that's what it is uh so all right you want to get out of here uh we're, we're gonna hit some top 24 rankings gonna go the opposite here on the next show with austin you got anything else for us let's do it man i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready all to talk right. about some blue chip talent some let's, some big dogs let's do it they gotta eat um uh jordan travis would be the quarterback that i would i would probably take a shot on late yeah, interesting guy. We'll see what he's probably going to get low draft capital. But if one more, I want to throw one more quarterback. So Travis or Pratt would be be those guys uh, that I would take a shot on. So let's let's wrap this up. Let's get out of here. Let's jump over to the uh, the top twenty four. You can catch Austin at Austin Abbott two T's two F's on the Twitters. Um, and I really appreciate you joining us. Good to have you back. And uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below so that you can tune into this uh, next show because it's going to be a lot of fun. Peace.